It is Chuck and Bob with you as we hit the halfway point of the Indiana football season and opening week of the Michigan football season. Wow. Goes by in a hurry, doesn't it? It does, and we're as happy as the folks up in Michigan are to see the teams like Edwardsburg and Berrien Springs and Brandywine and all the gang back on the field. But we're going to talk about some Indiana games today. Get you ready for the weekend. Let's start with Knox at John Glenn. This is an interesting series as I looked into it, Bob. Now, Knox has won the last four, but John Glenn had beaten Knox 14 straight years up until then. If Knox is going to do something about it, that quarterback, Zach Rose, will have a hand in it. He certainly will. And, Chuck, we talked in the game against Marion how he had a pretty good grasp of what they want to do, but it was a, an evolution thing underway, and the running backs are starting to get it too. So this is a team that uh, has gotten more explosive as they've gone on because they've grasped the offense a little bit better. And, of course, John Glenn, uh, I heard they were excited about beating Jimtown. Well, it was the first time in 30 years they've done it. So you wonder, Knox having beaten North Judson last week and Glenn beating Jimtown, which team might have a bigger letdown? And let's not forget, John Glenn's got a pretty decent quarterback itself, Nathan Creed, whom we will see next week. I don't know if you've heard kids or not, but we're going to Walkerton for the first time since 2003 for a football game when we've got Freeman and Glenn in week six. Well, I mentioned that Austin Faust is in his fourth year at John Glenn doing a nice job. He's going against a guy that's been around a little longer. Russ Radke, 44 years as a head coach, and every time we mention it, he goes, hey, <laughs> I just started here. So. Uh, let's go on to our week, uh, our number two game here, which is Goshen at Concord. This is one of Elkhart County's oldest rivalries, uh, the 67th renewal of this one, Friday night in Dunlap. It's tough to evaluate Goshen because we've only seen them once in the first four weeks. COVID kept them sidelined week one, week three, and week four, so we don't know much about Kyle Park's team other than the fact it's undefeated. They're one of the few undefeated teams. Now, they beat Clay. South Bend Clay is uh, having a tough time. And they beat Clay, but they put 43 points on the board. A lot of teams don't do that in a scrimmage. So uh, 43 points is pretty admirable. I know Kyle Park's working very hard. He's in his seventh year. And uh, he hasn't had uh, what you call a glut of talent over that seven years, but he's developed players. They were in the weight room during the summer and, or during the winter, and they uh, really worked hard to be ready for this year. He's got a quarterback named Colin Turner who will be tested going up against this Concord defense, which has been pretty solid. They beat C last week. Craig Kaler's team is 2-1 and one coming into this one, and they've got a receiver by the name of Jack D'Arcy who's racking up some catches. Oh, and by the way, they've got a pretty good two-way player in Zaven Koltukian, who has not only been a nice tight end for him this year, but he's all over the field on defense. Doing a nice job, and they're coming off a win over Wawa C. And the thing is, like we talk about a lot of teams, they use a run to set up the pass, and it might be the other way with Concord. They're so uh, really uh, good at passing the football that it almost sets up the running game. Goshen will be tested by the speed of this Minutemen team. We'll see how it unfolds Friday night. The big game in the Northern Lakes Conference Friday night will be over at Interra Field in Middlebury. The Irresistible force of Warsaw's offense going up against the immovable object of Northridge's defense. Well, a couple of great coaches here, too. Tom Wolgeman at Northridge has done a terrific job. And, of course, Bart Curtis in his 30th year as a head coach. And uh, check the good news for Warsaw is they're a little healthier than they were early in the season. Well, they've got this young man back, Juan Jaramillo, who looked impressive last week with a couple of touchdowns and over 100 yards rushing. I was also very impressed with Aaron Green and, and this slippery fellow, Julius Jones. They obviously have some weapons on offense. The question for Warsaw, can their defense stop Northridge's offense? And how successful this offense will be against a very physical defense of Northridge featuring guys like Dominic Crowder and Mason Puckett? This could be one of those games, too, Chuck. We joked last week about it being over in an hour and 15 minutes. This could be very similar because it's going to be important for Northridge to possess the ball, keep it away from Warsaw, and if they do that with uh, meticulous drives, it could be uh, one or two possessions per half. And the winner, obviously, in the driver's seat in the NLC. Now, the division that we'll talk about the most today is the NIC North. Three games. Let's start with the one over in New Carlisle. As St. Joe and New Prairie, a couple of two and two teams square off. I don't know about you, it's tough for me to get a handle right now on either one of these teams. 
Well, St. Joe's won their last two, which is really good because they had kind of a tough start against good competition. But they beat John Adams, who was undefeated. And uh, it was uh, fairly impressive, 21-14, the final score. What I like about Coach Witten is he's been patient again. And he's also gotten healthier because there's a guy named Asante Anglin who's back in the backfield doing a great job for St. Joe. Meanwhile, New Prairie, who started off 2-0, and ran into Andrean and Marion. No shame in losing to those two teams. I'm sure they'd like to close out the Catholic portion of their schedule with a win over St. Joe. And, of course, they'll rely on that big offensive line, but still trying to get all the pieces on offense working in the right direction. Yeah, their quarterback, Ian Skornog, is a good athlete. He's uh, been in the system for three years, and it's a new system under a new head coach, but uh, he's uh, getting a grasp, too, as it goes along. So maybe they're looking for other weapons. I'd just run behind the big, uh, the big right tackle, White Knight. There is a new number one team in the state of Indiana. It is the Marion Knights in Class 3A, Mike Davidson's team. We saw in week two look impressive against Knox. They've really looked impressive against everybody. They have speed to burn. That guy, Malcolm Anderson. Oh, their quarterback, Maddox Begonia Bright, probably playing as well as anybody right now at that position. But the thing that gets overlooked, I think, sometimes is their defense, Bob. Well, Michael Davidson is a defensive specialist. That's why he was the defense coordinator under Reggie Glan, and he really likes that side of the ball. He's proud of what the offense is doing, but he's down there working with that defense. And they're going to have to be good because Adams has a very similar attack. They've got Gavin pulling a quarterback who runs the ball exceptionally well, and he can throw it because they run so well. And Chuck Worsham is another one of those north-south guys. Give him the ball, he's heading for the end zone, and you, you really got to, he's a very physical young man. Yeah, we've seen Adams a couple of times this year, and obviously Antoine Jones' offense has sparkled for most of the season, although slowed down by St. Joe last week. Maybe teams starting to figure out the single wing approach that he used and surprised some people with earlier in the year. I also think for the Adams defense, this will be the biggest test that they've faced so far. No, no question about that. The thing is, it could come down to big plays. And Adams does have some guys who can uh, take it to the house and they can throw the ball deep. And if they hit one or two of those, it could change the outcome. So that should be a fun one over at Venerable School Field in South Bend. And we are expecting a fun one too. On the banks of the Elkhart River. Rice Field has stood for 97 years. It's had some great games over the years in Elkhart. We think this could be one of them too. Mighty Penn. Might we call them Michiana's villain? They wear black, they go into towns, they get booed, they leave with wins. And yes. they did that again last week against East Noble, and they've got a pretty good quarterback by the name of Ron Paulus. They do, and uh, East Noble's a very good uh, football team, by the way. And uh, Ron Paulus has really made himself into a real quality quarterback. He's gotten himself in great shape for this season, and he can run the ball. He's a very physical young man and, and a good leader on this team. This Penn defense, though, pretty young. They've been giving up points this year, 26 points a game, which is unusual for a Penn squad. And they are going to get tested on Friday night by an Elkhart team that has talent all over the field. You take a look at number one, Tyron Mason, number two, Derek Woods. But they, last year, they were Blazers and Chargers. We were at practice on Wednesday. They are all in. They are all Lions. And that guy there, Derek Woods, what he did against Central last year, he's done 12 times in the first three games this season. That score touched him. He has done a great job. And, uh, again, behind a big offensive line with a lot of experience, uh, he's uh, very good. The thing I liked about Elkhart and their attack is they can go outside and they can go inside. You know, Woods can take the ball up the middle, and then they can pitch the ball in the – uh, perimeter to Mason. Some of the guys, uh, I tell you what, Mason gets his hands on the ball. It's like Rocket Ishmael. You want him to touch it a dozen times a game, and if he does, some good things are going to happen. Now, you, you see the electricity of Woods and Mason on offense, and we can talk all day about the Blazer, <laughs> or, or excuse me, the Lions offense. Yeah. I knew I was going to do it once this weekend. <laughs> Glad to get out of the way of the social media preview. 99, Rodney McGraw is committed to Penn State. He's 25 pounds heavier than he was in that video. Still lightning quick against Columbus East this year. 17 tackles and three sacks in one game. And I love the way he's embraced the, uh, the putting together the two high school programs. And they reached out and they uh, made sure as a leader, he made sure they talked to the guys coming over from Memorial. Hey, this isn't, this isn't our stadium. This is your stadium too. And uh, he's become a real, I mean, just love, love to see how guys grow up. 
and how they mature. And Rodney McGraw is a terrific leader. Two fun facts going into this game, folks. Now, Penn never played the Unified Elkhart beforehand because Penn was just a small school back in the 60s right. and early 70s. But they entered the NIC in 1976, so they've played Elkhart schools since then. They are 79-3 and against Elkhart schools. And by the way, an Elkhart football team has not beaten Penn since 1985. You think the Lions might be a little hungry going into this game? I think so. And uh, again, uh, when we mentioned the Penn or the uh, bad guys, sort of like the Yankees, you either love them or you hate them. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of people over in Elkhart are looking forward to the opportunity. And, uh, and Josh Shattuck said, you know, if we beat Penn, are we the bad guys? It's okay with us. We just want to win. Exactly. So it should be a fun one. We'll have it for you on Facebook, YouTube, and the Champions Network at 645. And then, of course, on TV 46 Friday night at 11. And Saturday morning at 9. Until then, for Bob Nagel, Chuck Freebie, thanks for joining us here on social media.